My name is Danielle. My name is Cassidy. We love you, Grandma. Oh, I love you too, Glamma Girls. everyone, Glamma here. Welcome back to Made with Love by Glamma. So today we are going to have lesson two of our crochet beginner lessons. I believe I'm going to do lessons one through seven. So this is number two. So go ahead and meet me back there at the crochet table and we will get started and we'll learn how to single crochet. Alrighty, meet you back there. Okay, so before we start today's lesson, I wanted to show you on this diagram here what a single crochet looks like. So this is what we're going to be doing today. We're not going to do the shortest stitch first. I'm going to save that for um, maybe when we do the half double crochet or maybe towards the end. I don't know. Usually you use a slip stitch to close um, working in the round or um, for different things, but usually you don't use it for a fabric. So, so that you can get started really quick and start making projects, I wanted to start off with the single crochet, which is widely used in lots and lots of projects. So this is what a single crochet looks like right there. It's the second from the shortest of the stitches. And then we have half double crochet, double crochet, triple cro crochet and then double triple crochet and over here it tells you how many chains you need for your single crochet you need one chain for a single two chains for a half double three chains for a double four chains for a triple and five chains for a double triple crochet so this right here gives you a good idea of how tall the stitches are. See? Double triple crochet is the tallest, so you would need the most amount of chains. One, two, three, four, five chains. Today though, we are going to be doing the single crochet. So the single crochet is the height of one chain. Okay? See? Right there. The height of one chain. So that is what we are going to be doing today. Okay, so for today's lesson, let's get our crochet hooks. I've already got my crochet hook that I'm going to be using. A pair of scissors, tapestry needle, a row counter if you would like. And let's not forget our yarn. Okay, so now that you guys are pros at making slip knots, and chaining, we are going to get started with a slip knot. And we are going to chain 15. Okay, okay, so like I explained in the diagram or the picture, um, single crochets are one chain length high. So I hope that makes sense to you. So we're not going to actually use that 15th chain to crochet into. We're going to use that as the height of our single crochet stitch, okay? So this one right here is the 15th chain. We're going to ignore it, and we are going to go into the 14th chain. If you count from down here to up here, that's the 14th chain. If you count from here down, it's the second chain from your hook. Most people usually say, now single crochet into the second chain from your hook. So that's what you would do, okay? So we're gonna go into there. You see your Vs right here? We're going to go into just that top portion of your V, okay? We're going to go in, we're going to yarn over, we're going to pull that through. Now we have two loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over and we're going to go through both of those loops. And you just made your first single crochet, okay? 
and you might want to put a stitch marker there because at the end when we turn our work around you're going to know that this is the last stitch that you should stitch into and we'll talk about that a little bit more later and the common mistakes that are made okay so it's very important if you're a beginner you might want to put a stitch marker on your very first single crochet so we're going to repeat that we're going to go into the next v or the next chain and we're going to go into the top part put our hook in yarn over pull the loop through you've got two loops on your hook yarn over go through both and there is your second single crochet C there's your first one there's a V there's your second one okay now we're just going to repeat that so we're gonna go in yarn over pull up a loop yarn over go through both I'm gonna do this all the way to the end okay so I'll try to slow down in case I'm going too fast. I hope I'm not. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer. Camera tends to, the background seems like it's moving when I get too close. So I'm going to stay over here. So when your projects are this little, it's kind of hard to hold on to your work. So this sometimes tends to curl. So I kind of tend to hold on to the project over here. I start off holding it here when I'm going in. But then see how I grab this part? Yeah, so you might want to try that if you're struggling. Start off holding over here. And then I grab on to the actual project. Okay, so we've only got two more chains to go. One, two. Okay, one more to go. And the reason why I say one more to go is because a lot of people make a mistake and they go into this yarn right there, but that is not a chain. That is your slip knot. Okay, so if you made that slip knot kind of loose, you might see a big hole and you might think, oh wait, there's another stitch. No, that's not. That is your slip knot. So you're going to stop there and there is the end of row one. So if you want to use your row counter, click it now. Okay, so now that we've reached the end, we are going to yarn over and make a chain. Because remember we said that one chain is the height of a single crochet. So now that we've made that chain, we are going to turn our work around. We are going to go into that very first V. See that V? And this time, we're not just going to grab the top portion of the V. We're going to grab both loops of the V, okay? Like that. We're going to yarn over, pull up a loop. Got two loops on our hook. Yarn over, go through both. And there you go. There's your first um, single crochet of row two. So if you have another stitch marker, you might want to put it there, okay? I don't, let me see if I can get another one out. I'm gonna put it on that very first single crochet that I just made so that I'll know where my last stitch is when I'm coming back this way. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing that we did in row one. We are going to do that but we're gonna grab both sides of the V. When you're looking at your work from above, that's what it looks like. When you're looking at it from the side, which is how I usually look at it, you know to go into that little hole right there, and then the next stitch will be in that little hole. But you wanna go all the way through, grabbing both loops of the V, yarn over, and go through both, okay? Keeps getting out of focus, I'm so sorry, okay into the next one 
see like so yarn over two loops on your hook yarn over go through both see so now you've got one two three stitches we're going to do that all the way to the end go in right here there you go now just follow me all the way to the end Okay, so we've got two more stitches to go. Okay, and so the reason I told you to put that stitch marker there is because now you know that that is the last stitch, okay? So we're going to go right into there and do the same thing. And now we can take our stitch marker out. But the reason I told you to put it in there is because a lot of times people won't think that that looks like a stitch they'll think oh wait a minute I think I'm at the end because a lot of times if you didn't have your stitch marker there it tends to look like that and it looks like this is the chain that was the height of row one but it's not so a lot of times when people stop there their work ends up looking kind of like a pyramid like a triangle so you got to make sure to go into that very last stitch Okay, so now we're at the end of row two. We're going to chain one. Now you can click your row counter if you want. And we're on row three. We're going to turn our work around and we're going to go right back into here and do the same thing. And you can put your stitch marker there if you want. So while you're new, it's a good idea to do this so that you know where your first, um, stitch of the row is and where your last stitch of the row is okay here's my last one over here okay so let's go on and finish row three doing the exact same thing sorry if my camera keeps getting out of focus i'm just using my cell phone Okay, so continue this way and we're going to get to the end and then I'm going to let you do a few more rows until it looks like the size of a coaster that you might want. Okay, that way your lesson isn't for nothing. It isn't in vain. You end up with an actual project at the end. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take out my stitch marker and I'm going to go into that very last stitch. Okay. There we go. And now we are going to chain one and we're going to turn our work around. But you see how nice and even our work is coming out? And we're going to repeat the exact same thing. Okay, you're going to go into this one and make your single crochet. And if you want, you can put your stitch marker there. And you're just going to continue doing this all the way down till you get to the end of the row. And you're going to when you get to this one, you're going to work in that. You're going to put your single crochet in there. You're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work around. You're going to repeat this. I am going to come back, I think, around row 12 to 14. I'm not sure. When I come back, I'll let you know how many rows I did. Okay, so this is the end of row 13 for me. But since we had 14 stitches across, I'm going to go 14 rows up. So I'm going to do one more row. I wanted to show you how to count rows if you don't have a row counter. If you look at your work like this, do you see those divots right here? See those divots right there? Well, you can count that divot as your first row. And then you see this right here where you see these little 
um, dash looking stitches, that is your second row. So there's one where the divot is, there's two, row two, the next divot is row three, the next dash type stitches is row four, divot is five, there's six, there's seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and I'm on thirteen right now. Or you can count in twos. You can count these divots like this. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and then this one right here, thirteen. Okay, so we are going to start um, row 14. But if your work is not coming out square like this and yours is starting to go in on this side or in on this side, one or the other side or both, that means that at the end here that you're either not going into that last stitch of the row, okay, or if you are going into that last stitch, I'll show you what other mistake you might be making. And it's a very common mistake. I used to make this mistake when I was a beginner. So let me show you the next mistake that you might be making. Let's chain up one to begin our next row. There's the height of our next row. Turn our work around. So the second mistake you might be making is not going into that first stitch. You might be going into the second one here, see? You might be doing this and going here, so you're skipping a stitch, and that right there, you see how it's already starting to look like a triangle? Well, we don't wanna do that. We wanna take that out, and we want to go into that very first stitch right there to keep it nice and squared. See, already there's a difference. See how it's squared rather than going that way? <laughs> so that's just something that I wanted to make sure that you're aware of so um, your work comes out nice and square. Okay, I need to quit looking at the monitor and look at my work because I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to finish this row off with you, and then I'm going to show you how to end your projects. And then I'm going to show you how to weave your tail in, okay? And once you learn how to slip knot, how to make a slip knot, how to make a chain, um, how to make a single crochet, how to end your projects, and how to hide your tail. You can make so many things with just this one stitch. You'll be well on your way. Okay, here's my last stitch. See how a lot of times if you're a beginner, you might not think that looks like a stitch, but it is. You see there's a V. So you want to go in there and end your work. So that is the end of row 14. And so what we want to do to end our work, all you do is chain and then get your scissors and you want to leave a little bit of a tail so that you can, um, so that you can use your tapestry needle and you'll have enough yarn to thread the tapestry needle with. So now that you've cut it, you've made your chain, you've cut it, you just pull the yarn through and you tug down on that, see? And that's it it makes a little knot and you are done and over here at the beginning we already had a uh, slip knot so there that ends both ends of the project so let's go ahead and get our tapestry needle and we're going to weave in our tail so just thread that and what you want to do is you just want to um, I'm gonna go through these little See how they look like little legs right here? Little legs, little legs. I'm just gonna go through here, underneath it. I'm not going through to the other side. I'm just going on the top layer up here. Okay, you're just gonna do that. Don't tug too much, because you wanna keep it square. And then I'm going to ignore that little leg that little piece of yarn and I'm going to go in and I'm going to go back the other way going through those same areas okay and I'm not going to go too far I'm just going to go right there 
and I'm going to end it at that. And then I'm going to trim my yarn really close. And that's it. You are done. You tied off that end. You weaved it in. You can't even tell it's there. Now go and do the same thing to this side. Okay, so there is the end of lesson two. It's perfect for a glass, for a glass of lemonade, cup of coffee, or whatever. You can make a bunch of squares and you can sew them all together. Or you can make a big, huge square and make a blanket, a <laughs> baby blanket, a lapgan, afghan, whatever. You can do a lot of stuff with just this one stitch, okay? So I didn't want your first little project to be, or your first real lesson to be in vain. I wanted you to be able to actually make something with it. If you make it a little bit bigger, you can make pot holders. You can do anything with these. <laughs> This is all I knew how to do when I first learned to crochet. I didn't know how to crochet in the round. And when I was younger, when I first had my son, he's 33 years old now. Um, when he was going to be born, all I knew how to do was make single crochets. So what I did, I made a really long rectangle about this size, long enough to go around his waist. I sewed it in the back and then I made another square to go between his legs. And then I made another square to be the bib of the outfit. And I made an outfit for him and... Uh, I'll post a picture here somewhere, maybe over here, so you can see the picture that I'm talking about. Because all I knew how to do was single crochet and I just sewed a bunch of rectangles and squares together and then I made straps. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can do a lot of stuff with just this one stitch. Alrighty guys, so the next video will be this, this lesson in left-handed and then we will go on to lesson three and that will be half double crochets, okay? Alrighty guys, don't forget how much I love you. Don't forget to love yourselves and everyone you come in contact with. Alright, bye! Thank, Thank you for, for watching, watching our Glamos channel. channel.